Um, my name is Ross Dehovitz, and this is Sylvia Starlack. And we'd like to welcome everybody to the City of Palo Alto's 99th annual Mayfet Children's Parade. We're excited that you are with us this morning to celebrate 99 years of marching along University Avenue. All right, show of hands, how many have been here all 99 years? <laughs> 89 years. Any, anybody? Okay. Well, let's see how we do. Um, okay. Um, what's the history of this parade, Sylvia? I'm glad you asked, Ross. The May Fett Children's Parade is presented by the City of Palo Alto. Our parade theme, Empowering Wellness Through Community, on Wellness Through Community, honors and pays tribute to all the people and activities in Palo Alto that positively impact our physical and mental health. The May Fett Parade has been a time-honored tradition in Palo Alto since 1922. It has taken place on the first Saturday in May every year since except for one year in the 1940s during World War II and two years due to the global pandemic. We are all so excited to be together for this year's event. I'm sure there are many of you watching today, as Ross noted, um, that participated in this event as children. We're delighted to have you join us again this year and hope that you enjoy watching your children and the children from your community carry on this wonderful Palo Alto tradition. Okay, the parade route begins at the corner of Emerson and University. It will travel down University, it will turn right on Waverly, and end at Heritage Park for the annual May Fet Fair. The uh, Kiwanis Club of Palo Alto is hosting the May Fet Fair. Thank you, Kiwanis Club, for always being a big part of the community events in Palo Alto. While we're waiting for the parade to start, here are some May Fet parade facts. Mayfet Children's Parade facts. Six marching bands from local schools will be performing this morning, including Gunn High School, Palo Alto High School, JLS Middle School, Green Middle School, Fletcher Middle School, and the Palo Alto Unified School District's fifth grade band. Yes, give it up for the bands. I used to... I used to march in, march in bands, and I am here today for the bands. Um, speaking of music, Pro Audio Rental has provided most of the sound trucks along the route. Pro Audio's owner, Kevin Karecki, also marched in the parade when he was a kid and has been providing us with sound and music for over 25 years. Thank you, Kevin and crew. How many have been to this parade before? Can you raise your hand if you've been here before? All right, very good. How many have been here at least five years? Anybody? Five years, okay. Five parades at least. Anybody seen more than 10 parades? Oh my gosh, a few people. All right, excellent, all right. Anybody seen more than 20 parades? Whoa, oh yeah, yeah, very good. All right, we have a few, uh, a few um, people who have been here a long time. All right, well. Anybody, more than 20 parades? More than 20? Oh yeah, okay. How many? 1940s, oh my gosh, all right. <laughs> yes. We have some definite uh, uh, old time standbys here and, and parade uh, aficionados. Um, okay, I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing the, uh, the uh, police cars are coming down and so we're about to get started. And I hear some band music actually. So we're, we're gonna start very shortly. Here comes the parade. Starting off the parade is the Palo Alto Police Department. A big thank you goes out to the Palo Alto Police Department for their efforts in coordinating today's parade and keeping everybody safe. Thank you, Palo Alto Police Department. <laughs> Following the police department, we have the Henry Gunn High School Band. The award-winning Gunn High School Band is comprised of members from our freshman concert band, symphonic band, and wind ensemble. The Gunn Band would like to thank all the parents of, and students for their continued support of the arts in Palo Alto. It's the Henry Gunn High School Band. And 
behind the band is the Grand Marshal and the Palo Alto Youth Leadership. The Palo Alto Teen Groups are all dedicated high school students to organize and plan events. This year's parade Grand Marshal is the Youth Leadership of Palo Alto. Each group has 15 to 20 high school and students, the groups represented from the Palo Alto Youth Council, Teen Advisory Board, Teen Library Advisory Board, Teen Arts Council, and Arts Center Teen Leadership. Any teens want to make a difference in the community, join one of these groups. And it's the Palo Alto Recreation Foundation. Thank you, Palo Alto Recreation Foundation, for your continued support in sponsoring and funding programs and special events. The parade being just one of those events. Thank you, Palo Alto Recreation Foundation. And now we have City of Palo Alto Dignitaries. The hard work and dedication of our council members, commissioners, members of the Palo Alto School District, and City of Palo Alto Executive Leadership Team, please give a big round of applause to our 2023 Palo Alto Dignitaries. I know, and you're my council member. <laughs> Thank you for all your dedication in making our community strong. And it's the Museum of American Heritage, I think. And Family Festival. Doug Ellsworth is driving his 1960 Porsche 356. Follow these cars to Heritage Park to see our car show. All right. Uh, and here we are with one more exciting participant of the parade who has a great car. Uh, tell us, please, what brings you to the parade and how many years maybe you're participating in this parade? Sure. Um, I'm a, a local. I grew up in Menlo Park and then Atherton and Palo Alto my whole life, so I've come to this parade many times. And I love it. And I love coming to the car show. And even with the rain, it didn't, didn't bother me. Didn't bother you? That's great. And what kind of car do you have? This uh, is a 54-year-old Corvette. It's a Chevrolet, and I've had it about 30 years. And it came from San Francisco this morning in the rain. So it's not really clean right now, but it's clean enough. Thank you. I keep it in the garage, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a fun thing to own. It's a labor of love. It's no, it's no stranger to a tow truck. It's been towed many times. <laughs> And uh, do you represent any kind of like club or the organization here? No, uh, no not really. No. Yeah. That's I'd... wonderful. Thank you so much for, for participating and for, for, for being our uh, interviewee. No, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. And then we have Friends Nursery School. Welcome Friends Nursery School with preschoolers on bikes, trikes, scooters and strollers. It's Palo Alto Friends Nursery School. Nice bike. Look at the little rider. <laughs> Guys look great. Thank you, Friends Nursery School, for being here. All right. Perfect. And now we have a very yes. we have a very special float coming down right now. Um, we have coming up right next. It is Walter Hayes Elementary School, and they have a very special anniversary this year. The, um, Walter Hayes is celebrating 100 years in Palo Alto. <laughs> Established in 1923, Walter Hayes is the oldest continually running elementary school in Palo Alto and is a vibrant center and fixture in the community surrounding Marinconata Park at Middlefield and Embarcadero. Their core values, the Walter Hayes Way, plays a key role in each student's development, which supports a safe and positive environment for all to learn and grow. Principal Mary Busman, Hayes students and parents are all here today walking alongside their amazing centennial float and will continue their 100-year celebration later today on campus from 2 to 4 p.m. to reacquaint with old friends and colleagues. Let's hear it for Walter Hayes, and there's Mary Busman! Walter Hayes Elementary School! 100 years young! And look at that float! That float is amazing! I think it's a, it's a wildcat, and it just it symbolizes the core values of Walter Hayes. The whole school. <laughs> 
Walter Hayes Elementary School. All right, go ahead. All right. And next, Casa de Bambini. Casa de Bambini is a multicultural international Montessori school that provides the highest quality of Montessori education in a beautiful and enriching environment for ages two through kindergarten. They promote the child's well-being, safety, and self-esteem. They've been serving our community since 1992. They serve San Francisco's Silicon Valley area in the cities of Palo Alto and soon also Redwood City. Casa de Bombiti, make some noise. All right. All right. And we have another participant of the Mayfit Parade of the Palo Alto. And your name is? Paula Collins. Paula Collins. And you are the president of? The Kiwanis Club of Palo Alto. And what does the Kiwanis Club of Palo Alto do? It's a volunteer organization, exists worldwide. Uh, it helps children and family all over the world. And in Palo Alto, we do a lot of projects. Uh, we are a nonprofit. Uh, like uh, we, uh, the Juana Run, we help running the race. Uh, if there's a school or a park that needs upgrading or painting, we work on that. We do it all volunteer, and we pay for the whole thing. Wonderful. So, so this is the volunteer organization. You do this work just with with people who come to you. That's great. And like this, so does the city? contribute to your activities a little bit or how, how do you know well, about the project we're partners with the city but today we organize so we send letters to all these nonprofits so they could have a table here we're doing the gifts the toys we also I forgot to mention give scholarships to students from uh, Gunn High School Palo Alto High School so we also do that yes. wonderful thank you so much thank you. Next up, Pets in Need. Pets in Need is a local nonprofit, No Kill Rescue, with a shelter in Redwood City. In 2019, Pets in Need began operating the local Palo Alto Animal Shelter, which serves Palo Alto, Los Altos, and Los Altos Hills. In 2022 alone, Pets in Need adopted out 1,350 animals, vaccinated more than 2,900 pets, provided more than 2,500 pets with medical assistance to keep them in their loving homes, and taught more than 500 students the importance of animal sheltering through youth camps and programs. Thank you, Pets in Need. Okay. Palo Alto, City of Palo Alto friends, family, and pets. What a great way to meet your friends and neighbors. These families love being in the parade, riding their scooters, bikes, and strollers. And don't forget, they're awesome pets. Let's give them a hand for sharing their enthusiasm and being great neighbors. That's JLS. Yeah. Here comes JLS. Please welcome the Jan Jane Lathrop Stanford Middle School Marching Band under the direction of Margaret Billen and Mark Dungan. This year, the band is playing John Philip Sousa's famous American military march, the Liberty Bell. Go JLS. Solving Fun Palo Alto. We're excited to launch this year's Palo Alto Puzzle Hunt, co-sponsored by the City of Palo Alto and Solving Fun. Join with friends and family to solve puzzles and discover locations in Palo Alto. Free all month long, fun for any age. Thanks, Solving Fun Palo Alto. Edgewood House Preschool is coming up. Edgewood House Preschool is a full-day relationship-based learning community for children ages two through five. With low ratios, indoor-outdoor exploration, and emergent child-led learning, Edgewood House really is home sweet school. Welcome, Edgewood House. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're 16, 16 ounces. Okay. Yeah. And another beloved institution in this community, here come the Girl Scouts of Palo Alto. In 1922, Service Unit 601 was established as the first Girl Scout Council on the West Coast. In 2022, they celebrated 100 years of scouting in Palo Alto. Lou Henry Hoover, the wife of President Herbert Hoover, had been active in Girl Scouts on the East Coast and was president of the National Council of Girl Scouts. So she grew up in California, went to San Jose State, and then studied geology at Stanford University, where she met her husband. She also met Juliet Gordon Lowe, who founded Girl Scouts of America at the end of World War I. Welcome, Girl Scouts. First Congo Nursery School. First Congo is a parent participation nursery school serving children ages two to five. It's been a staple in the community for 60 years. First Congo values that collaboration between educators and families and knows that partnership is the best way to serve children. The families of First Congo are thrilled to be in the Bayfet, a long-standing school tradition. First Congo! Do, do we have 18? Oh yeah, they are. Set. They're up there. Oh yeah, they're coming. <laughs> what did she say? Are you the one speaking? Oh yeah. <laughs> Next comes the Scouts BSA Troop 52 of Palo Alto. For over 110 years, families have enjoyed scouting in Palo Alto. Scouts BSA Troop 52 focuses on outdoor activities and skill building, such as camping and hiking, as well as community service and leadership opportunities. Join Scouts today to be prepared, experience new adventures, and have fun. It's Scouts BSA Troop 52 of Palo Alto. And following the Boy Scouts, 19 is our Palo Alto Community Child Care. Staff and families from Palo Alto Community Child Care are here. Oh, wow. Just Me too. Yeah. Palo Alto Community Child Care. After them, not my name for the Ellen Fletcher band. Oh, look, it's, 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 it's all the different ones. Oh, look at Duvenet Kids Club, Barron Park Children's Center. Wow, everybody. Aloney. <laughs> Aloney, yes. Okay, DKC. Very cool. That's a big group. Yeah. Maybe the biggest group. Yeah. And we have even more from Palo Alto Community Child Care. I think I see <laughs> Ellen Thatcher. I see College Terrace. I see Sojourner Truth. Oh my gosh, so many. Very cool. Neighborhood Infant Toddler Center. There we go. And Sojourner Truth Development Center Preschool. Very good. Thank you. And following them, the Ellen Fletcher Middle School Band, made up of 7th and 8th grade students from Ellen Fletcher Middle School. They're under the direction of Mark Dungan and Sandra Na. They're performing the Washington Post March by John Philip Souza. The Ellen Fletcher Middle School Band. And following them are the Emergency Services Volunteers. They have Palo Alto community members who want to make our city more prepared for the range of risks we face. This is a vibrant, dynamic, neighborhoods-based volunteer program that is directly connected to the city's emergency management organization. Whatever your interest, we can find a role for you. The Emergency Services Volunteers. OK, we are affiliated with the Palo Alto Office of Emergency Services. and. Uh, we are a volunteer organization. Right now we have at Palo Alto residents about 740 volunteers 
in several different categories, uh, neighborhood coordinators, block coordinators, and CERTs. Now CERT is Community Emergency Response Team. It is a national organization that is sponsored by FEMA and you have to go through about 25 hours of training to become a CERT. So we're trained in uh, search and rescue, uh, medical treatment, small fire suppression, uh, things like that. And we have right now 270 CERTs in Palo Alto. We have about 35 neighborhood coordinators and about 435 block coordinators. But we need a lot more people considering that Palo Alto is a population of 70,000. Okay, so that is what we do, and we are constantly looking for new people to uh, sign up and volunteer in one of those categories. Okay. So, uh, did you, have you been to the parade? Uh, no, I I don't march in the parade, but we do have certs that marched in the parade. Uh -huh. I'm I'm working here in the booth with uh, Nathan, who is our um, uh, emergency services coordinator for the city. Um, and he works for the chief of the Office of Emergency Services. So we, it takes a while to get all this set up. So while the parade is going, we're taking care of setting things up. But we had a bunch of certs marching in the parade, not only from Palo Alto, but we had some from Sunnyvale and Mountain View and Los Altos and, and uh, Menlo Park, too, that came and joined in the march. That sounds wonderful. And so for how many years have you been the part of this organization? I've been uh, a cert since... Uh, 2012. 2012. Yeah, so yeah. Years. Yeah, and I've been the cert leader for about the last five years, and I've been a trainer for about seven or eight years. So, yeah, quite a while. Do you enjoy that? Yes, yes. It's uh, it's, it turns out it's a lot of work, as a volunteer. Yeah. So, I'm fortunate that I was able to retire from my business uh, early. And so I've been able to devote a lot of time to, the, to this uh, organization. And continuing on, we now have Addison Elementary School. Welcome, Addison. Palo Alto's downtown elementary school, Addison Elementary School. Hello, Addison Elementary School! Yay! That's cool spirit. Yeah. Very cool. And Addison, oh, oh and then we go to Castilea School, it's founded in Palo Alto in 1907. Castilea's mission is to educate and motivate young women to become confident thinkers and compassionate leaders with a sense of purpose to affect change in the world. Today, their, their Gator Robotics team is marching with the robot they created for the first robotics competition. They're joined by the school mascot, the Castilea Gator. It's Castilea School! And following them now, we have the Gamble Garden. Gamble Garden's decorated truck. And look at those volunteers with their festive and flower-oriented hats and aprons. It's the Gamble Garden. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that truck is beautiful. And following Gamble Garden, we now have the Stanford Strikers FC. Stanford Strikers Football Club brings to youth ages 3 to 19 the joys of soccer, all levels, recreational and competitive, empowering Palo Alto youth for more than 20 years. It's Stanford Strikers FC. Okay, and now we have 
The Bowman School, since 1995, Bowman School has committed to inspiring children to love learning in an academically challenging and internationally aware environment that promotes independence, responsibility, and respect, whether in the lives of others or in the world around us. We strive to guide children to make a positive difference and desire to become change makers in our community. It's Bowman School! And following them right up is Alcove Palo Alto. Alcove is a place for all youth ages 12 to 25 to access a range of emotional, physical, and social support services, such as peer support services, short-term mental health services, psychiatry, and some physical health services on their own terms. They also serve as a space to hang out, play games, or come for weekly events, such as game night and movie night. They're located at 2741 Middlefield Road in Midtown Palo Alto. Thank you, Alcove. Of Palo Alto. Oh, gun robotics team. Here comes the gun high school's robotics team. They competed in the first robotics competition against thousands of other robotics teams worldwide. Each year they build a brand new robot from scratch in six weeks. This season they traveled to Utah, Monterey, California to compete with their robot Vermilion. And here is Palo Alto Chinese School. Here come the parents and students. Feel free to learn more at their website, paloaltochineseschool.org. And following them, Pali Robotics Team. It's a high school team dedicated to enriching the education of their members and the community. Founded in 1996, Pali Robotics has been participating in the first robotics competition for over 20 years. Thanks, Pali Robotics. So we have a, a beautiful tent, the blue color, that probably stands, I'm just assuming that, for some envir environmentally friendly organization and the pursuit to save the environment. And please tell us a little bit more about what you're doing here and, uh, yes, and who you are. My name is Ryan Mayfield. I work for the City of Palo Alto and we're with the Watershed Protection Group. Basically, it's all about protecting we're trying to create awareness for stormwater pollution because a lot of the bay is polluted because of the stormwater pollution. So when people throw trash, it ends up in the storm drains, it makes its way to the creek out to the bay, or people, when, whether you wash your car or just any kind of impurities, they're finding out now in the bay that most of the pollution is from stormwater runoff. And when people are aware of that, they're more inclined to not litter as much, recycle more, and reuse things, and also save water. We have a Rain, rain barrel water recycling raffle going on. So the rain barrels are nice. You could attach them to your house for the downspout and it captures a lot of the rainwater that comes off your roof. So it's another way to help save water because water is always precious. Even though we haven't a lot of rain this year, it's not always going to be like that every year. So that's what we're doing. True story. Yeah. And, and uh, especially in California, it's really important because we are like more inclined to be a desert climate Absolutely. from what we are seeing in this years and please tell us a little bit more about this activity that you have for the kids okay so they spin the wheel and it lands on the category and then we have questions that pretty much get a try to get the kids thinking about how they could be more environmentally conscious about trash recycling and how precious water is thank you so much You're welcome. thank you Give it up for the PAUSD 5th grade marching band. This marching band is made up of 5th grade music students from the 12 elementary schools in PAUSD. These students started playing their instruments this year and are excited to perform for all of you today. Make some noise for these new young musicians. <laughs> And here's Ohlone Elementary School teaching hearts and minds for over 35 years. Ohlone Elementary School! Way up 
there is minus guidepost minus one, and then comes here. Up next, Guidepost Montessori at Palo Alto is a school where children find the joy in learning, and this makes it possible for them to continue learning for the rest of their lives. As they grow in a mixed age group, they feel inspired and guided by not only their teachers, but their classmates as well. It truly becomes a community experience that equips each child with the knowledge, confidence, and tools needed to explore and reach their potential as they grow in independence and agency, realizing that they are a member of a global community. Come and say hello. Guidepost Montessori at Palo Alto. And right behind them, Parents Nursery School, a parent cooperative school that's been serving families in Palo Alto for almost 80 years. At PNS, parents and children learn together in a nurturing, supportive environment. They love each child for who they are, they value and respect childhood, and they believe in the importance of play. Their beautiful outside classroom has over 100 trees. Welcome Parents Nursery School. And that music you're hearing is the music of the Green Middle School Marching Band. Made up of 80 8 0 7th and 8th grade band students under the direction of David Brigham and Susie Martone. Middle School Marching Band. That was Green Middle School Marching Band. And following the Green Middle School Marching Band, we have coming up here next the Green Dell School and Preschool Family. Green Dell and Preschool Family are Palo Alto Unified School District's early childhood education, preschool, and parent education program. Give it up, everybody, here for Green Dell School and Preschool Family. <laughs> Greendale School and Preschool Family. Okay, that's okay, fine. Where did she go with the bag? And I think Preschool Family is coming up just right about now. Oh, and now the rain is starting. Oh my gosh, hopefully it will not become a distance. Too. Hello, Preschool Family. Preschool Family Teacher Maria is here holding their, their number. Thanks, Maria, for all your years of teaching. And then comes First School. Here comes First School. They have been part of your neighborhood for over 40 years. They have kiddos from ages 2 to 5 and have a wonderful play-based curriculum that helps prepare them for the kindergarten years and beyond. Please visit their website or the school. It's First School. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, cool. Thank you. And next, what we have here is Lucille M. Nixon Elementary School. <laughs> Lucille Nixon Elementary School is a warm, welcoming space for all learners. Nixon Dolphins celebrate diversity and inclusion. Together we learn play and grow as students and as members of our community. Nixon Dolphins are empowering wellness through community every day. It's Nixon Elementary School! All right, and next we have Dance Connection offers classes for ages three to adults 
From beginning to advanced levels and summer dance camps for children and teens, dancers can perform with competition and recreational dance teams for jazz, ballet, contemporary, hip-hop, tap dance. Located at the Coverly Community Center since 1989, that's 34 years, it's Dance Connection, and I think I see Cindy right in the front. And led by teacher Jeff Wilner, the, here come Pally High School Vikings pep band and dance team. Pally band performs at all Pally home football games and in concerts throughout the year. One of their favorite days of the year is today because they get to perform for all of you. All right, we're here at the uh, Mayfed Parade at Palo Alto, uh, and our first team that we're going to interview is Vikings. Where are you guys are from, and what brings you to this Mayfed Parade? Uh, we're the Pali High, uh, Pali High School uh, dance team, and we're here because this is a yearly tradition that we do with band to perform for everyone, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, which school do you represent? Palo Alto High School. Palo Alto High School. Yeah. That's amazing. And do you guys have like certain number that you are performing with? Yeah, oh, our yeah. Uh, band dance that we perform at our all of our football games. Uh, we were doing that uh, along with dancing to some other of the band songs. Wonderful. So you are a cheerleader team? Uh, the dance team. There's a different cheer team. So we do dance and they do cheer. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. How did you like the parade? It was, it was really fun. No. Yeah, minus the rain, but yeah. still. Plus the rain. Plus, <laughs> plus the rain. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. All right. Pa thank you, Pally High School Band. Next, Palo Alto Fire Department. Wrapping up the parade, we have the Palo Alto Fire Department Fire Engine and Public Works Green Machine and Street Sweeper. Thank you. Fire Department for continually supporting us all. Thank you Public Works team and all who have helped tremendously with setting up the parade route this morning. You're all very much appreciated. Palo Alto Fire Department. And don't forget to come down to Heritage Park after the parade today for the Mayfed Fair until 1 p.m. There'll be games, activities, and food trucks. Museum of American Heritage will also be hosting a vintage vehicle and family fun day across from Heritage Park until 2 p.m. <laughs> On behalf of the City of Palo Alto, everyone who marched today, our generous sponsors, and to all those who work behind the scenes to make this parade a success, thank you for sharing this morning, this wet morning, with us. Have a marvelous weekend. And we will see you next year on Saturday, May 4th, may the 4th be with you, for the 100th annual May Fed Children's Parade next year, Saturday, May 4th, 2024. Take care, everybody, and I think that's a wrap. <laughs>